this crowd, obviously, today. And I, I thank you. This was the... Uh, 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 we weren't planning on this. I was telling uh, the two Moody descendants here, Brady and Susan, that perhaps Geraldine always used to getting the, the lady Renee in the gallery after getting all the attention, so she decided she wasn't getting the attention, so she sent us this storm, but maybe not. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get descendants from each up here. I, the whole idea, when you, if you haven't seen the gallery, is we featured some of the women in this area who, as we said, left their mark, or dared to be different. In some cases, they all left a mark in some respect. And I, I'm going to embarrass her. We have the only living one with us, Karen Kuzler. <laughs> so you can read about Karen when you go up there. And Cindy and I are quite put out because we're all the same age, so that we thought wasn't sending a good message. And Brady here with us. Yeah. So um, I hope you enjoy it. It's different from usual museum exhibits. It's a combination between a art installation and a museum exhibit. We use artifacts more to as objects to relay a message as opposed to actually doing a, a, a complete re, um, replication of say a room or a theme. So we're not trying to recreate the exact settings with the artifacts, simply using object to association to, with the uh, item and the time period. The fashions which you will see are representing those women's professions that were acceptable at the time. And that's why there's so few. There's, there weren't a lot of... And that's in addition to the clerks, the waitresses, and the chambermaids. We're talking about professions. That's why there was the teaching, the nursing, the military, and clerical. So, enjoy when you see it. It was a labor of love for all of us. The whole works put this together and we probably hammered the last nail an hour ago. And there are some captions missing yet. The boots, Addie Brandt, Joe's great aunt. Boots that are up there that were custom made for her by her dad when she went to ride as a jockey, first female jockey to ride in Calgary. And that caption isn't done yet, so there's the odd one that uh, we have to add. And I'm not going to get too much into some of them, but you'll learn a bit about some that were sad stories, like Fanny Small, who in 1892, her dad took a man to court. Fanny had nothing to do with it. Women did not have rights. He took the young man to court for a promise to marry under a law at the time. And uh, he had got her pregnant, backed out on the so-called marriage, and the father took him to court, and in the end, it read like today's, uh, what's the thing you see at the rag and all of the checkout counters, the National Enquirer. Yeah, right? It was very much like that, and poor Fanny drugged through the, the whole thing. Even the testimonies to, uh, to Fanny's character were given by men, the women were not allowed to give them. So you'll read a bit about Fanny, and she did come out in the end. The family lost everything to pay for the court costs. So it, I get emotional, but it went to the Supreme Court of the Territories at the time, and they won, but it was challenged, and they lost in the challenge. But Fanny did have a happy ending. She married a sheep rancher north of Maple Creek and had a, a good life uh, somewhat later, but you can read a little bit about her. We have the track and field uh, coach that came into Maple Creek and took a very fledgling team during the war years and turned it into, they won every trophy uh, that particular year, 1941 I believe it was, 
and they swept the trophies, but they also swept the meet with 140 some points. Swift Current, no, Jonathan was second with 50, and Swift Current 40 or something to that. So they were, they just left them in the dust. So I thought Karen would be interested in that because she was also big in track and field. And the Mei Wong, many of us remember Mei Wong. Uh, she's featured um, as the first Chinese lady to run her own business. A lot of these people were the first. We have the Bernson family that have a special section because we have some amazing artifacts which aren't labeled. <clears throat> we not sure, other than the forceps, what everything else is for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we do. We know the breast pump. We got that one, and uh, it's. Uh, she has an interesting history. Uh, one of the few professional midwives that came to this country and she delivered countless babies but unfortunately did not keep track of them and we're honored that the family donated these items to us. So uh, read about, I'm going to get it wrong, I'm going to say Berta Knudsen. Okay. Okay, I'm never sure if I'm pronouncing it Bertha or should be Bertha or... Um, family came all the way from Calgary yesterday and uh, we're so happy and the great-granddaughter would be... Great-great and triple great. Yes, are here today. Lena and Virgil uh, are in the community and we're happy. Your mother's come from Germany. We've got people from a long ways away came for this. And unfortunately for the roads, some people understandably couldn't make it. I think they're all wusses because you all made it. So there you go. <laughs> no, uh, I don't blame them. The Wong family ended up stuck, I think. Where's John? Right here. <laughs> In Gull Lake. <laughs> you just... <laughs> so, uh, thank you for coming. And I'm going to put this plug in, and I know I've missed, there's many others up there, so I hope I've got everybody that's here, I think. Anyway, there's others you'll meet, but I want to put a plug in. This place, we have to keep the money coming. I'm going to get into that. The white elephant in the room. If it isn't, for, it wasn't for all the wonderful donations that people have made here, we wouldn't be running because last year we spent over 200,000 in repairs to this building. Now in a small town that's pretty hard to raise. We have a legacy program where we ask people living a hundred kilometers or more to give a thousand dollars or more to families. And the Burnsons I'd like to thank because between the Lethbridge and Calgary crew, five thousand dollars last year. So thank you. Uh, Bernson wasn't able to come. He was the last one delivered by his grandmother. And he said that his mother had told him he was delivered by uh, kerosene lamp uh, for lighting. So we had the lamp in there for, for birth. <coughs> and uh, they have a special tie to this whole area. And I'm so glad you're here. And, and thank you for sponsoring uh, not just the, the items in that, but for your support. And to everybody, thank you. Um, have I missed something that we should be saying here? Uh, yes? I'm just going to say, since you weren't sure what some of the instruments are being used for, and one of the nephews, it would be Kurt's son, married a lady, Ruth, from Germany, and she is a midwife in Germany. Don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We thought we had them all listed because Joey had brought the collection in the year before we got involved, and everything was meticulously recorded, but it says 10 tools or whatever used in the trade and I, 
Well, we do let the wild ones. We're all cringe. <laughs> <laughs> two. We got two out of the ten, I guess. So uh, I think I'm going to, uh, again, I want to make sure that we appreciate the work that everybody puts into this because we've worked our behinds off. Um, Al does all of the um, typing and the, the um, caption cards. Uh, Cindy was helping us with the costumes and putting it all together. She did the food along with Tammy. Where's Tammy? There she is. So thanks to Cindy and Tammy for that. John brought the wine, that end of it in. Um, and Henry in the back, he always gets forgotten. He maybe didn't play a huge role in this gallery, but Henry is responsible for Henry Mullets, by the way, many we just all assume everyone knows Henry. He did all the plywood for all the galleries throughout this building in the last four years. Plus he did the, when I say not directly responsible, he was. The core part of that gallery is the result of Henry's construction abilities. So the Knudsen and Naismith and uh, 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 Birdson Knudsen and Naismith connections that exhibit area and Addie Brannis in there was thanks to Henry's construction and all of the gallery walls as well. The two that painted are sitting there, Geraldine Moody's great-granddaughter and her partner Wendy, and Randy's going to help cut the ribbon today. <laughs> um, so it's kind of neat, we had the, one of the granddaughters involved with the uh, putting the good show together. Once again, thank you and enjoy. Have some wine, have some nibblies. What we're going to do is get you up here now, the two Moody's in the middle. I shouldn't say Moody's, they're Susan and Rainey Howard. Um, yeah, you're ready. Thank you so much for including us today. 